Uh, hi, my name is Matthew Dance. I'm a, a director with the Tomorrow Foundation, a small local environmental organization, and I'm also a grad student uh, in the Department of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences at the University of Alberta. My interest in air quality stemmed from uh, work I did with the Clean Air Strategic Alliance and as a consultant. So we, I, I was working in a multi-stakeholder, uh, consensus-based collaborative process around air quality and that gave me uh, a bit of a background and a bit of understanding of what the pertinent air quality issues are in Edmonton. My paper is called The State of Edmonton's Air Quality. Um, I think the City of Edmonton right now, we're in a very interesting and dynamic time. Currently the air in Edmonton is rated as being good over 90% of the time and when it's not good it's often the result of climatic variabilities like temperature inversions or forest fires. So when, when a forest fire is burning we'll get more particulate matter in the air, we'll get more uh, smog and haze in the air as a result of that natural event. What we need to do in terms of managing Edmonton's air quality is start planning for the future. I think uh, we're at the threshold of having issues with particulate matter and ozone from anthropogenic sources that we need to start considering how we move through the city and how the city is formed to uh, allow folks to walk or drive or take transit or LRT in response to the potential impacts of too many vehicles on the road into the future. Along the lines of uh, things that we can do within Edmonton, I think the City of Edmonton is taking some very important steps forward by integrating the Transportation Master Plan, uh, the way we move, with the Municipal de Development Plan, the way we grow, uh, in an acknowledgement that the urban form um, influences how people tra uh, move through a city. So for instance, the City of Edmonton is developing an anti-idling policy that is a policy if implemented properly can dramatically reduce idling and the emissions associated with idling within the city. But to think at a, at a more broad level, um, we have a, a, a number of buildings, many, many hundreds if not thousands of buildings within the city that can be influenced by uh, a better building code, a more efficient building code so that we start addressing some of the area source emissions and not focus solely on vehicles. So the uh, emissions that I'm, I'm thinking about are related to how we heat our homes, um, the efficiency of the home in terms of keeping warm air in and cold air out, that type of thing. British Columbia is implementing a building code that has higher standards for the buildings being built so that they are more energy efficient. This is something that the city should consider in the context of working with the province. In addition, the city is uh, intimately involved with several airshed zones in the Edmonton region. Those airshed zones uh, are vitally important for involving uh, many different stakeholders, including, including community members, in uh, determining uh, outcomes and policy to support air quality outcomes. The city should uh, maintain their involvement, if not increase their involvement with those airshed zones in terms of uh, interfacing and interacting with the key stakeholders in the city and around the city in the greater Edmonton region who do influence air quality.